on. And in a way, that might not be realistic because, you know, you're just trying to get it done. You're trying to figure it out. But what is realistic is sort of that iterative design process. And that's exactly what refactoring is, where we're going to design an initial solution, look at it. After we have it working, look at it, think through it, and decide, oh, okay, how can I make that better? What kind of common code do I have? What can I break out into an include file? All those sorts of things. And that's, again, the process of refactoring. Um, some of the other things, like syntax errors and all that, that will just come with time. I mean, there's really nothing I can, can say, wave a magic wand to, to get around some of these. Um, just know that, that, that you know, the, the PHP uh, interpreter is cruel. And, you know, if you make a mistake, it is going to, uh, um, you know, it's going to come back to bite you. Unlike HTML, where you can make a mistake and maybe your page will still display. All right, with PHP, it isn't going to work that way. Uh, a couple things before we get into the class proper. First of all, I encourage you all to check out, and I posted a, a little announcement to it on Angel, about career services. Uh, career services is... Um, a resource on campus that probably is not utilized uh, as much as it should be. Um, we from time to time get calls from them wanting to know, do I have a web development student that would be interested in an internship or this or that? I encourage you to check them out and you can, you can uh, uh, visit their website which I posted to Angel. In addition, um, I gave a phone number to call. And I have a little bro brochure that talks specifically about one aspect of, of uh, career services, work-based learning. And I would love for you to come and take one uh, after class if you want one. Um, work-based learning is a great opportunity. Um, we do the best we can to make interesting and, and challenging problems. but. Um, what we do in the classroom isn't real world stuff. And um, it, it is in a way it's preparing you to do real world stuff. And therefore, you really get out there and really uh, continue your learning by going into an assignment, uh, an internship perhaps, and, and learn uh, you know, how this is integrated with the rest of the business. And, and you learn a lot of great things in that, plus in addition technical skills. So, Again, I encourage you all to come up and, and get a brochure or contact them through one of the other methods that I mentioned. Next, as far as the next few classes go, here's what we're going to do. All right, today we're going to wrap up this example. And I'm not sure how long that will take. All right, we'll see how long it will take and we'll see if we have questions and so on. Depending on when we finish, we may adjourn early to lab because I can imagine some of you have some lab questions. Or we may uh, do a quick review for uh, the, the quiz, which is a week from today. All right. Um, the review sheet has been posted out there for the quiz. And we'll either do it today or we'll do it on Wednesday. So sometime between now and Wednesday, we will finish up this example, um, review for the quiz, and you'll have plenty of work time for for. Uh, for um, any, any uh, outstanding projects that you have out there. All right? So that's sort of the plan over the next three days, or next three classes, that is. All right, let's look at where we were with this. And where we were with this was we used an array to to um, print the uh, quiz out. Let's go and look at the code that does that. We have our two arrays, add n1 and add n2. We do the same sort of processing we did before. That is, we check to see if a form is being posted. 
back to the server. In other words, the form works in two modes, the original display of the form and then the second pass where it's graded. Uh, we haven't thrown in validation yet. We, we're just assuming that everything validates okay. We'll do that as sort of the last step uh, today. And if it's the first time through or if there's a server-side uh, validation error, we go in and we display the form. Now, in this case, the, the, the display the form function, the first thing we do is we make global those two arrays. Remember, PHP is sort of an oddball language because variables are not declared in PHP. Therefore, you can't declare a variable as a local or a global. Um, a variable is assumed to be a local variable unless you say otherwise. And what do I mean by local or global? Uh, a local variable is a variable that's only available in a function. A global is one that's available uh, across functions or, or anywhere through the page. Well, to make it behave as a global variable, we have to declare it as a global. I'm pretty sure that has to be the first line in the function, too. It sort of makes sense um, that you'd, you'd want to do it early, early on. All right. If you notice what we have here, again, and I know this can be confusing, you just really have to work your way through it, is this function actually contains some PHP code and some HTML code. It contains PHP code for the, for, uh, the looping, but there's HTML for the form tag, for the end form tag, and for the input, and oh my goodness, someone must have snuck in and put a break tag in there. Just for, me. Just for you, yeah. Now, if you notice, though, we've altered those slightly by putting in, in the middle of the HTML, a print to output the number. And in that way, the first text box is called answer one, or I'm sorry, answer zero. The second text box is called answer one. And then we have an error span for the error codes that we're going to put there as well. All right. So when we run this, we can look at the HTML that gets generated. Always a suggestion to, to really understand what the code is doing. Look at the HTML that gets generated. And here is the HTML that gets generated. you notice that we have our form tag. For every question, we have our input, answer zero, answer error zero, break, then one, one, and so on down the line for as many questions as we have. This is pretty maintainable because all we have to do to add a new que question to the quiz is simply go into those arrays and add another element. So if we want 10 plus 10, To be the last question, we just add 10 and 10 to the, these two arrays, and um, we're good to go. Notice we even don't have to put the answer in, because our assumption is that they're all additions. So if we know the first number and the second number, we can calculate the answer. So that makes it even more maintainable. It actually would not be that hard to make it so that it was a... Uh, uh, you know, any sort of math question would simply have an array of operators. The time sign, the plus sign, the minus sign, and so on. All right. Let's worry about grading this now. Let's, let's work on the code to grade this. And again, we're going to save the validation um, to last. So, display the results. All right. We can't really do what we did before. All right. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to sort of take this loop and put it up here. I will say, please, right? Please make the effort to indent your code properly. 
it is really hard to debug code that is an indented. If you notice, what I typically do is my starting bracket is at the end of that, and then this lines up with the start there. Other folks do it like that instead. It really doesn't matter, but at a glance, we should see where the containment is. All right? We should know, just by looking at these brackets, that that function goes from there to there because that's the ending bracket that goes to the start function. All right, I put the loop in here now, and first thing I guess I have to do before I do this loop even, is I need to make those global variables. All right, because remember, this function can't see those variables unless we explicitly make them global. So we'll make those two variables global. All right. Um, dollar sign name equal, equals question answer. Dollar sign I. All right. Because each time we're going to look through each subsequent answer. If dollar, your answer was this. Let's change the way we're displaying the answer. No, let's let's just let's just count how many they have right and wrong. Okay, we can't have a hard coded answer of two anymore. How do we get the correct answer? We take add n1 sub i and add add n2 sub i. I'm going to initialize a variable for correct and the total number of questions to zero each. As we loop through, once for each array element, we're going to grab the answer from the query string. The only difference between this and what we've done before is our query string is constructed of the word answer plus a number on the end. Why? Because that's what our form control has in it. If we look at these text boxes, you'll see answer 0, answer 1, answer 2. So therefore, in our code, as we're looping through, we're going to look for on the query string answer followed by the digit that, again, will start at 0 and run through for as many elements uh, as are in the array. So if the answer equals to the correct answer, we have a winner. So I can increment the number correct by one. And regardless if they got it right or wrong, we have another question. Now, when we're all done, we can say a print with a magic quote.
Notice that that's after the loop because we only want to display that at the very end. At the very end where we want to say how many right or wrong they had or how many right they had. Questions about this? What's the key thing to this, the, the key pieces to this? Number one, that we're making those uh, arrays global variables. That way this function can see those variables that were declared outside of it. If we don't do that, that function won't know about those arrays and this whole thing won't work. All right. Second thing, we're initializing two variables to count the total number of questions and to count how many questions they got right. And we're going to start out making those each equal to zero. This is a loop that's going to start at zero and it's going to go for as many elements are, is, are in that array. So it's going to do it as long as that variable i is less than the count of that array. What is the count of the array? That's how many elements are in the array. So if there are 10 elements in that array, the questions are numbered, or the, rather the answers are numbered, answer 0, answer 1, all the way through answer 9. So that's why we do that loop as long as i is less than the count of the array. We're going to increment the total number of, of answers, uh, or I'm sorry, the total number of questions rather. We're going to grab the answer for this question off the query string. And what is it on the query string? It's answer plus the value of i. First time through we're going to grab answer 0, second time through we're going to grab answer 1, and so on. Again, those magic quotes you can use all over the place. You don't have to just use them in a print statement. They work as far as the is getting a, uh, uh, a value out of the query string as well. Our correct answer we calculate by adding the ith element of the one array to the ith element of the other. We then compare to see if the answer equals to the correct answer, and if it does, they got another one correct. When everything is done, we then print out how many correct they got out of how many questions. Well, let's make sure this works. It would be a shame to go through that nice, lovely explanation and find out that it doesn't work. But let's go in and let's, let's get all of them right. Ah, we got an error. Input missing, fill in the form. Uh, I forgot to turn my validation off, I think. Yeah, my validation was left over from the when there was only one question. And it was looking for a variable called answer. And there is no variable called answer anymore. So it was telling me that it was there. So let's go and click that. I got six out of seven right. What did I get wrong? Oh, this one should be seven. All right, there we go. All right. So the grading part of it worked. Now we could do that. We could output it any way we wanted to, right? We could check to see uh, what percentage that is and display a percentage. Or we could have a function somewhere in an include file that gave me the letter grade. You know, if it's 80, uh, 90 to 100, it's an A. 80 to 89, it's a B, and so on. So we could display that. We could, we could put a gold star if they got uh, more than... If they got all of them right, if they got only one wrong, we could give them a silver star. You know, we could actually create an HTML image tag that had a different image depending on how many questions they got right or what their percentage was or whatever. So we can customize that output to look any way we want to. We could store this result in a database if we want to. We're not doing any of those today, but again, we could do a lot with that through our PHP scripting. All right. Questions about this?
If you look really, the only difference between this and the one question grading is we stuck a bunch of these statements in a loop and we changed those statements to include the array element and, and the index uh, of that so that uh, we're not just looking at one answer, we're looking at a whole set of answers. Then I threw some totals in and, and all that, but really there isn't a huge difference between this and what we originally had. Question. Now, let's get to validating this. And as you might imagine, Validating is going to look real familiar Let's lap some of this code off. All right. We have to make at least a one array global, right? If for no more if for no other reason, then we have to know how many answers to even expect. Right? So we have to know how many elements there are in that add end one array. So we have to know how many to expect, so we need to make that global. We're going to do what we did before, and that is we're going to assume the page is valid until we find out otherwise. Okay, so we say dollar sign valid equals true. We're going to loop through. All right. We're going to loop through uh, each answer. We're going to grab each answer, and then I'm just going to validate it to see that there's something there. All right, I could also validate to make sure it's numeric or could validate a lot of different things, but in this example, I'm just going to validate to make sure there's something there. So, I'm going to say if dollar sign answer equals an empty string, then guess what? It's no longer valid. So valid equals false. All right. This will loop and it will check all of them for that. All right. Now, if it makes it through all of them and doesn't find any empty ones, then valid will remain true as it was set up here. And this will return a value of true. If any of those things are empty, if any of those text boxes are empty, then this line of code will be executed and the form will not be valid and therefore it will return a false. Now, don't get happy yet. We're not all the way done yet. We're going to have a problem here. All right. Okay, there's that. Yeah. Not very user friendly, right? And it wipes out their answer that's already there. Ooh, I don't like that. So let's go in and let's make some changes to this code. Let's stop and think for a while. How can we make this work? And by work, I mean two changes to this. One change is I want to display next to the ones that were empty, the fact that that was empty. That, that, that hey, you, you need to fill in a, a field here. As opposed to just saying, hey, you forgot something. Number two, I don't want to penalize them by wiping out the form uh, every time. All right? How do you think we can fix this? Well, we're doing a post back. All right? This page is posting back to itself. 
So we're in a position to do it because we're redisplaying the form, but we need to do two things. We need to do a couple of extra things that weren't apparent when we only had a one question quiz. And that is we need to display an error message next to the proper answer and we need to fill in the values for the ones that they did enter in. So how do you suppose we can fix this? Yes? All right, right. We can fill in the values by simply grabbing the value off the query string. So let's try that first. Do, 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 do. Here's a text box. How would you give it a value? How do you give a text box a value? Pardon me? There's just a value attribute there. So I can go here and say value equals, where am I going to grab that value from? The query string. So what we need to do is we need to pop into PHP mode. and print the value of dollar sign request answer i. All right. So we're setting the value of that by popping into PHP mode. Now, we get the answers there. But I suspect the first time through there's going to be a little problem. Because it's not on the query string. All right. Well, that's easy enough to fix, right? We could actually fix this a couple of different ways. Probably the simplest way to fix it would be when we pop into PHP mode, only do this if there's a value for it. In other words, only do it when there's a post back. So I could say if is set Now we don't have that problem the first time because we don't try to output it uh, if it isn't set. Right? If this condition is false, it means it's not a post back. Right? It means that it's the second or third, you know, it's not the second or third time through. It means it's the first time through. So this works in both cases now. All right? So we get the error and we can display that. All right. What can we do to display the air right next to the field? Well, a couple ways we can do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to declare another array. All right? An array of air messages.
All right, we'll do this. There might be a more elegant way to do this, but we're going to take the brute force way. I'm going to declare an array of error messages and start out initialized as a bunch of empty strings. I'm now going to make that also a global array. In the validation section and in the um, display form section. As I loop through and validate, I'll then set the ith element of that array to something like must enter a value. And then when I output that error span, I can output out that error message. So the ones that have a value get the value, the ones that don't get their error message next to it. All right. Now again, we're relying on a couple different things for this. We're relying on the fact that we, we can test to see if something's on the query string or not. And by the fact that something's on the query string or not, we know whether it's a postback or not. For example, if it's not a postback, we don't even try to display the value. The other thing we can do as far as the error messages goes, we can create an array with empty error messages in it for all of our elements. and if we find an error, we can set that, and then we can use that array to go and, and populate this. Now, uh, we might be able to do something a little more elegant with the error message. I'll, I'll give you that. All right? But that being said, to add a question, right now, all we have to do is go in and add there, there, and there. And our entire our entire quiz is there validated and graded. All right. All done with a bunch of loops. Really, if you compare this, if you go back and compare this, this would actually be a good exercise, go and compare this next to the one question quiz. And you'll really see that really, essentially, we added an array, or, or three arrays actually, and pretty much we added loops to each of the function. And, you know, maybe a handful of lines here and there other than that. But essentially, all we did is we built uh, a, a structure that fed the values from an array and we loop through those array to do all that stuff. All right. So take a look at this uh, and compare it to the, um, uh, the, the single one. Now, um, 
few other important things about PHP coding just to repeat. I didn't in this case, but the use of include files can be very important, especially if I was going after a consistent look. If this quiz was part of a larger site, for example, that had math lessons and this and that and a quiz, that would be a, a good uh, thing to do it. Notice how, again, I have broken down my code into a series of functions. And each function is sort of a standalone thing that, that is gone and, and, and executed and does its job. All right. The template for doing a postback is pretty much what I did. Right? You're going to have a validation. You're, you're going to determine which mode you're in, whether you're an initial load or a postback. You're going to do the validation if you're in the postback mode. You're going to see if it's true or not, and then you decide whether to display the form or do the results. All right? Um, okay. We're a little bit early. Um, I don't think it's worth it to try to do the PHP quiz review today. So we will do the quiz review on Wednesday. And the rest of the time Wednesday, I don't anticipate the quiz review to take the entire hour. So you have a little bit of extra time today to work on that, and you should have some little bit of time Wednesday to work on your assignment. So let's wrap it up here, and we can go to lab.